Earlier today on Twitter, also known as X, the NRA issued a tweet that said that today was National First Responders Day, and they honored those who bravely face danger for our safety, specifically the dedication of our military, law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs, and so on. Um, I, of course, have nothing against those individuals and the professions and the professionals in those professions 100% support them. However, the truth is, as we've talked about on this channel, it's really not accurate that they're first responders. And it's really not accurate that they should be celebrated on National First Responders Day because the real National First Responders are American citizens who are the ones who deal first with a sick person, the criminal, the wild animal, the dangerous situation, or the fire. Let's talk about all of this when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Box, a diner, proud American gunner, and constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of Disarmed, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms, a book that the Israeli government should have let read before they had their citizens attacked by Hamas. Armed citizens work all around the world, including Israel. Okay, folks. So, the NRA sent out a tweet or a post um, today that says that on National First Responders Day, they're honoring, uh, you know, firemen, law enforcement, EMTs, uh, members of the military, and so on. And I honor those professions as well. However, I do think, as we've talked about on this channel, it is not accurate. And I'm not here to quibble with the NRA uh, at all. But I do think it's fair to say that it's not really accurate in a real sense that these professions are first responders in the real sense. In reality, these professions are second or perhaps third or tertiary responders to dangerous situations. We've talked about this on this channel before, and it's very important. And I don't think, by the way, this conversation I'm having here about who is a first responder is academic. I don't think what I'm trying to talk about here is some sort of cute game to get views or anything like that. No, I think it's far more important than that. I think it is absolutely 100% mission critical to the Second Amendment movement in America that it be understood across the board that the real first responders are American citizens. Those citizens that first encounter that sick person with a heart attack in the mall, that person that sees the criminal committed a crime across the street, or the crime, criminal who's getting ready to attack him or herself, or the individual that realizes that the house next door to him is on fire. It is these American citizens who see the problem first, are the real first responders. They're the ones that have to deal with the fire, deal with the criminal, deal with the wild animal, deal with the sick person, and whether that dealing with that may mean you know confronting them physically with a firearm, trying to put the fire out with a fire extinguisher, or administering CPR, or simply calling 911 so that the professionals can show up and deal with the situation. Whatever the response is, even if the response is to run away and hide, the reality is on the ground that those American individuals, those citizens, are the real first responders. And it's mission critical that we keep telling everyone about this. Because I know I like to use the phrase, you are your own first responder. And that is excellent advice as I see it. But it goes beyond just advice about how to stay alive and how to understand the dynamic between you and the criminals, which we often talk about in the context of the Second Amendment. Because as you know from the Supreme Court, one of the primary purposes of the Second Amendment's right to keep in your arms, as articulated by the Supreme Court of the United States itself, is that you be able to have a firearm unloaded and loaded, firearm loaded and unlocked in anticipation of a confrontation with a violent criminal for self-defense purposes. That's what the Supreme Court itself has said. And that is all true. But again, I think it goes beyond that because I do think, and I'm not knocking anyone that's a uh, firefighter or an EMT or law enforcement or in the military, any of these things, I'm not knocking them at all. I just want it to be clear that it's not really accurate that they're called first responders. 
I think a lot of this is ginned up by people that support government and try to cr create the impression that it is always the government that knows best. It is the government that does best. I also, and I'm going to dig digress just briefly here, I actually have been working on something about how I think uh, that, 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 that over time, the U.S. government and the U.S. Army and the U.S. military has to some degree usurped some of the tremendous sacrifices and successes and contributions at the time of America's founding from the militia and the Minutemen of the time. Again, I will do a video on that soon enough. I'm working that up. But again, the idea being that we must never, never give a monopoly of credit or a monopoly of authority or a monopoly of, you know, being great and good and heroic exclusively to those individuals who happen to get a paycheck or volunteer as an agent of the government. Because although they are heroic and great in many instances, and should deserve, by and large, our respect, they're not the only ones that contribute to protecting society. It is the ordinary American citizen, whether that person be an accountant, a shopkeeper, a lawyer, a truck driver, run a restaurant, work at a, you know, work serving food, whatever it is, those people have as much to say and as much opportunity and in some ways duty to help protect society as anyone that receives a paycheck from a government entity in the United States. And I would also add that in many respects, it is better and more efficient and often far more successful that ordinary citizens on the ground facing, for example, a criminal are in a better position to defend themselves from that criminal than any police officer, for example, could be. As I wrote about several years ago in a book called Duped, which discussed how the anti-gun lobby exploits the Parkland school shooting, I talked about an economist many of you are familiar with named Milton Friedman, the late Milton Friedman of the University of Chicago uh, School of Economics. And it was Milton Friedman that said there's two types of money in the world. And you'll see why this connects up and you'll understand real quick. Milton Friedman, the economist, said there's two types of money in the world. There's your money and there's everybody else's money. Now, the point he was making was that when you spend your money that you earned, you're very careful with how you spend it. You're very conscious of what you do with it, how you spend it, and the return on investment you get uh, that, you know, when you spend it, you want to make sure you're getting a good value. You pay attention. In contrast, when the government spends money, it is spending the money of other people. It is spending other people's money. And as Milton Friedman wrote about, it was always the case that government misspent money because it was not spending really its own money. It was spending other people's money. So the analogy that I drew in the book Duped about how the Parkland, you know, how the anti-gun lobby exploited the Parkland school shooting in Florida, in that book I point out that that metaphor or analogy also works when it comes to protecting our lives. Because there's two types of lives in the world. There's really your life and the lives of everyone else. Now, I'm going to modify that just slightly to say there's really two types of lives in the world. That is your life and the lives of your loved ones who you would be willing to sacrifice your life life for, your, 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 your spouse, uh, your parents, uh, your children, uh, your siblings, whatever. The point is, that's one type of life, and then there's everyone else's life. Your life and everyone else's life. And again, that's not to say that you want other people to you know, suffer ill will, or, or I should say to suffer ill effect, or to die, or, or to be injured, or anything like that. It's just as a practical matter, humans value their own lives and the lives of their loved ones far more than they do anyone else's. So why is this relevant to the you are your own first responder? And why does this speak to what's important about when you discuss National First Responder Day to make it clear who are the real first responders? This notion of two different types of lives, your life and other people's lives, is important to understand because nobody has a greater incentive. No one has a greater incentive to save your life and the lives of your loved ones than you do, in the same way that no one has a greater interest in spending your money than you do, because you earned it, it's yours. 
You may not want to want other people to be hurt. You may not want other people to misspend their money or anything like that. But the reality is you're more careful with your money and your life than you are with other people's. It's just human nature. Milton Friedman recognized this, the famous economist. So to me, you are in a better position and you have a greater incentive than to defend your life against a scumbag, psychopathic criminal of the sort of person we saw in Maine that the government was aware of and did nothing about, apparently, than does a third-party police officer or fireman, or anyone for that matter, who works for the government, who shows up after the fact, or after, you know, you're getting shot at, and to try to defend your life. And they may work really hard to try to defend your life. They may be very heroic. They may be heroes. Or, of course, they may not be heroes. They may be the kind of police officer that stands outside the school building for an hour while, you you know, your children are being shot. Or they may be somebody else who's not heroic, who drives the police car slowly to the scene to avoid having to deal with a gunman. We don't need to get into that, but not all police officers and not all quote-unquote first responders are heroic. Some may be and some are, but some are not. And do you really want to bet your life on the idea that the police officers responding to your problem is A, going to get there in time to do something effective about it, and B, is actually falls into the category of hero category as opposed to the category of Let's just go slow and, you know, set up a perimeter and see what happens. Do you really want to bet your life on that? I don't think so. Again, the bottom line is this. When we talk about first responders, it is mission critical to understand that we have the greatest incentive to defend our own lives, more so than any third-party stranger, police officer, or other so-called first responder. Even when they're trying to save your life, they simply don't have the same incentive that you do to protect your own life. And that is something that we must always keep in mind. And again, while this video is not in any way intended to denigrate the servicemen and women, the EMTs, police officers, and firemen of our society, um, it also bears mention that, as we know, we talked about on this channel before, the multiple United States Supreme Court precedents that says, effectively, that the old police motto of to serve and protect, it's not really legally accurate. Police have no duty to defend you or to protect you if a criminal kills you. There's no legal liability associated with that unless they have you in custody. If they've locked you up in the back of their police car, yeah, then they have a duty. But generally speaking, police have no duty to protect you or your life from criminals. So with all this said, again, I'm happy we have National First Responders Day, although the truth is the real first responders should be deemed the ordinary Americans that deal with the problem first. And what we really should be calling this weekend is not National First Responders Day. It really should technically be called National Second Responders Day or perhaps National Third or Tertiary Responders Day. But the reality is, uh, for now, it's called National First Responders Day. And we should just keep in mind that the reality is we are the real first responders and not government employees who, again, respond second or third to the problem because we have to deal with it first as American citizens. All right, folks, hope you learned a little bit something here today. Um, here at the Four Boxes Diner, don't forget to subscribe to the Four Boxes Diner. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Don't forget to follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner, and we will see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.